So last week I partly finished the motor mount for the electric bike version 4 and was waiting for the pulleys to arrive. So since then I made a start on making all the rest of the parts for the motor mount. Now because the plates of the motor mount have to be separated uh, perfectly and also perfectly parallel uh, due to there being uh, bearings a seat in it and also a shaft that goes through. I had to make some spaces that held the two plates exactly 43 millimeters apart. Now fortunately my granddad owns a lathe so I was lucky enough to use his lathe to make these spaces out of some aluminium tubes. The lathe also allowed me to shorten the length of the motor as I mentioned in last week's video the uh, stub on the end of the motor got in the way of the pedal cranks uh, so being able to cut this off and make it look relatively nice was quite handy. Uh, he also has a grinder so I could grind some flats on the end of the uh, secondary drive shaft so that when I mount the pulleys onto the drive shaft uh, they have a flat bit for the grub screws to grip onto. The pulleys arrived shortly afterwards and it was time to assemble the rest of the bike. But here comes the first problem. My camera ran out of battery. Now I'm not sure what's the best way to kick myself but I definitely deserve a kick right now. I basically decided to take the bike for a quick test ride and um, yep the pulley failed and I have no footage of its destruction. So what happened? Well basically I rushed the design to try and get it done in a week. Uh, if you've watched the pulley video I actually went through two versions in one week and I overlooked a very simple design mistake. This is what one of the pulley spokes looks like before it's broken and this is what all the six pulley spokes look like now. It seems there is just too little material around the bolt holes at the bottom of the spoke. Uh, which when torque is applied from the motor puts an upwards force on the right hand bolt and a downwards force on the left hand bolt ripping the left hand bolt out of its hole. Now the reason for there being so little material on this point is that the pulley has to fit over the disc brake hub on the wheel which is 52 millimeters in diameter. So just before I finished designing the spokes I had to cut out this 52 millimeter diameter hole in the bottom of all the spokes so that they fit over this hub. Now I did in fact do some uh, structural analysis or simulation in Fusion 360 uh, on this spoke before cutting it out. Uh, however I got some unreliable results. Because I have no idea how much torque this electric motor actually produces I had to look back on one of my version 3 electric bike videos which ran the same motor. Uh, I will also put a link to the motor in the description below because a few people asked in my last video. And what I found is that the bike accelerates from 0 to 30 miles per hour or 13.4 meters per second in about 12 seconds. This gives an acceleration of about 1.2 meters per second squared and as the mass of the bike and me is about 110 kilograms uh, it gives a forward force of 132 newtons. With a tyre radius of 0.325 meters this gives an average torque of 42.9 newton meters. Now because this is an average torque I'm not sure exactly what the peak torque is. Uh, it could be quite a bit more than this and plus the electric bike version 4 is geared for 20% extra torque but 20% less top speed. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to double this torque value uh, as a safety factor. So let's use 85.8 newton meters. So because the radius of the pulley is 0.14 meters and this torque has to be shared between six different spokes, basically one pulley spoke has to withstand 102 newtons of force at its tip. Which when these values are entered into the Fusion 360 simulation gives a safety factor of 2.16 which basically means the pulley spoke should be able to withstand double the amount of force without breaking. Now for those of you engineers out there I did in fact use the smallest mesh size uh, possible and this took quite a while for my computer to compute it um, but I had to do it just to get the most accurate result possible uh, but it still wasn't correct. So obviously after the real pulley destroyed itself I decided to go back to the Fusion 360 simulations and I realized I was carrying out the experiments completely wrong. I'd originally fixed the pulley at the bolt holes at the bottom here and then applied the horizontal force at the hole here. But what this didn't take into consideration is that these bolt holes can be ripped out. So what I had to do is I had to change the simulation and basically uh, use a bolt constraint in Fusion 360 to bolt these holes to uh, a fake hub and redo the simulation. This gave a result that looked a bit more accurate with a safety factor of 0.87 basically meaning it was going to break. I took this testing a step further and I actually took the old spokes mounted them to the hub and then clamped the hub in the vise. I put them in the opposite direction so that it would rip the other bolt hole out um, and it would give a pretty accurate test even though one side of the spoke was already broken. I then hung weights from the end of the spoke and tested how much force it could endure. 
Okay, this is the first test with 10 kilos. Seems to hold 10 kilograms, but it looks like it's deforming. I don't know how well you can see, but there's definitely some deformation around this bolt hole here. Okay, so I've raised the weight to 11.25 kilograms. And slowly lowering the weight. And guess what? They failed at 11.25 kilograms, which is about 110 newtons of force, which is also only slightly higher than the Fusion 360 prediction. So I got on with designing some new pulley spokes, which not only had more material around where the bolt holes were, the bolt holes were actually spread further apart to reduce the amount of tension and compressional forces when it's put under torsion. I also designed and cut an aluminium ring, which would reinforce the 3D printed section of the pulley. But before cutting out all the bits and assembling the pulley, I decided to recreate the same structural test by clamping the new pulley spoke in the vise and hanging some weights from it. And it managed to hold 20 kilograms without budging, even with a few hits from a hammer. The next day or so was spent cutting, tapping and bending all of the new pulley parts, as well as printing the new 3D printed tooth profile section on my new 3D printer, which was sent to me by Anycubic. It's their new Chiron model printer, I think I pronounced that right, and uh, it's pretty nice so far. It's got a huge build platform and it's got some really nice features that my old Corality CR10 didn't have. I've only printed a few things with it so far, so I can't give a concrete verdict. However, I'll be posting a link to it down in the description below, so go check it out if you're interested in a new printer. The pulley was then assembled on the wheel and then mounted to the bike, and it was ready for another test ride. But of course this time I was going to record it. Yes, it's past the first test of exceeding walking speed. Then a bit more torque caused the belt to slip. Time to add some more tension. I then slowly increase the throttle inputs each time to see how the pulley handled, and it seemed to hold up pretty well. However, the issues don't end there. The pulley seems to withstand all the forces now, so that's all solved. But I tried to remove some of the smaller pulleys to thread lock the grub screws, and they weren't budging. Even with both the grub screws removed from each pulley, and I also heated up the pulley to try and expand it on the shaft, it wasn't coming off. Basically what had happened is that the stainless steel shaft was quite a soft stainless steel and the grub screws that uh, clamp it to the shaft had dug into the stainless steel and from the torque of the motor the grub screw had basically chipped some of the stainless steel and this chip had lodged itself in the aluminium of the pulley basically locking the pulley to the shaft after quite a lot of hammering and using plies on the pulleys uh, whilst trying not to wreck the teeth of the pulleys uh, I managed to get them off eventually however I then needed to source a hardened stainless steel or hardened steel shaft uh, for a replacement. I then realised that I still have the old motor with the old 8mm shaft which is a hardened steel shaft so I decided to put that in the bike and all was good. Now the bike is ready for me to mount all the electronics in properly and finalise it and then go for a proper test ride. Well not really. I also noticed whilst riding the bike at a certain speed at about 20 miles an hour uh, the bike started to vibrate quite violently and I think this was some kind of resonant frequency caused by the small belt or the secondary drive shaft. I just need to pause the video for a few seconds. Uh, I came down to the shed to film the vibration of the initial pulley step down and fortunately it's not actually something wrong with my design but unfortunately there is a design fault or something wrong with the new motor that I've got. Uh, I apologise if the audio is a bit bad, I'm just filming this on my phone. Uh, but let me try and show you. I've disconnected all the belts and there's still the vibration occurring. So it seems like the motor is unbalanced. So as you can see here, this is the motor output shaft and there's no belt connected to this step down. And then the rear wheel is obviously disconnected uh, from the belt for safety reasons. 
and if I throttle up, at a certain RPM you'll hear a really violent vibration. Now I'm not sure how I'm going to edit this quick uh, video that I'm filming on my phone into the main video um, because I think I explain that I'm going to go back to the old single pulley setup uh, but now I've found out that is the motor then I need to try and solve that with the motor and that my design with the motor mount is actually okay so we might still be good with the high torque dual pulley step down setup Anyway, enough of this talking, let's go back to the main video. I'm kind of tempted to run the main drive belt straight from the motor, so get rid of the dual pulley step down. But then that removed the whole idea of having lots of torque on this electric bike, and my last week's video would be completely pointless, because I have to remake the whole motor mount. So that's where I am with the electric bike. I'm not really sure what to do next. I hope the whole analysis of the pulley, the structural destruction of that, uh, was of interest to you. Um, I need to take a step back from the whole project and do some more thinking about what I'm going to do next. Uh, I would rather do that than you know do another step forward and then two steps back again. Um, so yeah, I want to spend a bit more time trying to engineer it properly. I um, I did say at the very beginning of the project that I wasn't going to rush this, but um, the excitement of having an electric bike just got the better of me and I ended up rushing it. I also need to mention that there won't be a video next week. Uh, I want to start going back to doing full length uh, project videos uh, every you know couple of weeks or so um, mainly because I've ended up working weekends to try and get these projects done because it normally takes a day or two to narrate and then edit the videos uh, ready for upload so it only leaves me about three weekdays to work on a project which just isn't enough to make uh, a decent length video especially with the various projects that I want to do. So I'm quite looking forward to spending a good week or two on a project and then editing it. Um, you know, finalise project, make sure everything works and then upload it to YouTube so that you guys don't have to watch all these fails as much. I will still mention the bits obviously when something fails, um, but instead of making a whole video on it, it will be, you know, just a little segment in the video. Um, because I think it's important that obviously I, I show the mistakes I make. Um, but yeah, I'm just looking forward to spending a bit more time on each project. Uh, also, I've got a few collaborations coming up in the next few weeks, so it might not be that long before the next video, probably two weeks or so. Um, so I'm not completely stopping the weekly videos, I'm just saying that I'm not going to rush a project uh, to get out for a week um, if it's not finished and it's not working. So if you, don't, if you don't see a video from me on a Friday, then don't worry, I'm just spending a bit longer on a project. So stay tuned for the collaborations that I have coming up. Um, also for the electric bike, it's not dead just yet, uh, just might need to spend a bit more time on it. Um, and yeah, I'd like to thank you very much for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, please click subscribe. A huge, huge thanks to all of my Patreons for supporting me. You guys make these not-so-weekly videos possible. Uh, I will be uploading uh, behind-the-scenes stuff, you know, what I'm up to uh, photo-wise on Patreon. Um, so not full videos every week, but I will be at least posting uh, photos up on Patreon if you want to know what I'm up to at any current time. Thanks once again for watching and I'll see you in a few weeks. Goodbye.